Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Mac Shoots Film. Okay, this episode is kind of a sad one. We're counting down our last 48 hours in Arizona before we head back to the southeast. So I was packing up all my cameras, all 11 billion of them, and I ran across this beast, the Nikon FM3A. It struck me that I've only shot it maybe once, this go in Arizona, and I haven't put out a video, I haven't done a proper review. So let's solve all these problems today. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna walk around beautiful Cave Creek, Arizona, shoot a couple rolls of film. I'll start out with Kodak Gold 200, shot at 100, and then probably switch over to Lomo 400. So just walk around casual day talking about the pros and cons of this absolutely amazing camera. Guys, if you're into this type of content, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. It helps the channel so much. Also, I was looking through the stats and a ton of you guys watching this video aren't even subscribed. That's crazy. Please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell to make sure you receive notifications of all uploads. While you're at it, please check me out on Instagram. I put out a ton of work there that obviously isn't seen in these videos. So that's a good way to keep up to date with my portfolio. All right, let's walk around and shoot this monster camera. All right, guys. So I really like the light in this narrow hallway and then how the mountains are in the background. I'm gonna shoot around F8, focus on up close in the bright light, let the shadows fall off. Let's do this. I love shooting a 50 millimeter lens because it forces me to either zoom out with my feet or to shoot a very specific part of a larger subject. And that's exactly what I did with this composition. It may be really boring, but I love super harsh bright light on highly reflective surfaces. And this building right behind me served that purpose. So what I did was I shot a tight crop on the roof line, but I let the parking lot lines lead into the frame to let you know, hey, eyes look this way. Then it's just super tight with the yellow. Hopefully it was fully bright with that blue contrast of the sky. I can't see it because, because film. So hopefully that turned out. Okay, more walking around. Actually today is the first video in four videos where it's less than 115 degrees. It is six o'clock and it's 102 degrees. Might as well break out the winter coats, guys. Let's go shoot. So earlier I was talking about the one four thousandth of a second shutter speed, which is amazing for any film camera. You know, the F3, which I love, has two thousandth of a second shutter speed, and my Leicas, obviously, I'm in love with, but they only have one thousandth of a second shutter speed. The really amazing thing about one four thousandth of a second shutter speed on the FM3A is it can be achieved without a battery. That's right, guys. No batteries. This thing will still run one four thousandth of a second. When I was packing this camera up for this video, I was freaking out because I didn't have batteries. Then that wave of warm calm came over me because I remembered I don't need that. You do not need batteries to run this camera. You do for the meter and for aperture priority, but sans batteries, you're still shooting 4K, which is pretty amazing. That's definitely a pro. so many things to take photos of. So this place is absolutely amazing. Around every corner, it seems that there's just something else really cool and unique to take a photo of, but it's a really crowded little area. So stuff is on top of each other. And I turn on the corner and it's this beautiful chapel and there's power lines across it. You know, sometimes you just have to accept that they're there, they're part of that natural scenery and just shoot through it. Sometimes I will take them out in Photoshop if it's just one, but these power lines are so prevalent. I just shot them and kept them. Uh, I did experiment around. I had some light bulbs hanging in front of me and I focused on those with a shallow depth of field, kind of blur out hint that the chapel was there. 
And then of course the next shot, I focused on the chapel, power lines and all, with the chapel set to the right third and the mountain in the background set to the left third to hopefully balance it out. Really uneven light on the scene, shadows and then bright light. But that's the type of stuff I love guys. Just shoot through it all, you'll figure it out. So I'm in this beautiful place with all this cool scenery and I'm shooting the side of a barn. <laughs> That's just how I roll, guys. Pro and con time. Let's knock out two real quick. Con, you have to shoot the camera like a lot of other Nikons, the lever needs to be out. A pro is the exposure lock button. This is the best placed exposure lock button on any film camera in my opinion, of course. It's placed right on the back, right where your thumb sits. So it's perfect placement to engage, turn the camera on, because it's being fussy, and then engage that exposure lock. So you will point to where you want your exposure to be taken, the shadow side of a barn, press in the exposure lock button, hold it down, recompose. It's pretty awesome, I love that. This chick came up, I'm shooting landscape mode, and she just literally bumps my arm. <laughs> On purpose. <laughs> this ain't Danny shoots video. <laughs> Max shoots film, girl. Get it right. <laughs> okay, guys, we just left Cave Creek a quarter mile up the road and we are in a town called Carefree, equally as beautiful, a ton more shade. I'm enjoying that. So what we're doing is just walking around, grabbing a few shots. I've got about four exposures left on this roll. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Let's do this. So I found another banal composition. This light and shadow, I'm gonna shoot it real tight with the 50. Maybe with a shallow depth of field. Let's see what it looks like. All right, so let's talk about another pro. I absolutely love the match stick needle meter readout in here. You know, I have a Leica M6. I really dislike the metering system in that, the arrows pointing. I love the matchstick meter in my M5. It tells me exactly where I need to be, and then I can take a lot of creative control by seeing the actual numbers associated with my exposure and how many stops over or under I am. It just gives so much more control. Also in the viewfinder, I can see what aperture I'm at. So I can make a fully informed decision as what my exposure is gonna be like. It just gives me so much creative control. I really love a matchstick needle meter readout. All right, the sun is about to get stupid. We've got 35 minutes before sunset. I say let's head out into a little more open area and take advantage of the landscape and this beautiful light. Yeah. 